Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear. Um, it's been a long time since I've said that. I need to look, but it's probably been like a year, <laughs> maybe more, since my last upload here on YouTube. Um, anyway, I guess a lot has been happening, but maybe I'll do like a quick catch up at the end of this. <laughs> um, in the meantime, I wanted to talk about something real exciting. Um, I've been working on this for quite a while and I don't really have a ton of time to review these days, but this is exciting enough and I have a little bit of free time. I was just at the range this morning. All my stuff is still sitting next to me and I got home to an empty house for a little bit. And so I'm gonna do a quick, I, you probably can't call this a review. Um, I designed this knife, me and Ryan, <laughs> us over at Left Concepts. I co-own the company that is behind this knife. So to call it a review would not be the most fair thing ever, but, um, this is the Mark II, or the MK II. Um, it is a reworked iteration of our AVNT model, and it is our first USA-made production knife that is coming to market. So this is a big deal. It's just been um, a lot of work <laughs> to get to this point, to have something built here um, in the US, and I know that that's probably gonna I don't know. That we'll see what happens in the comments. I feel like a lot of people have opinions on country of origin for where things are manufactured. Clearly, uh, with all the work that we've been doing to get these made in the U.S., um, it's important to us as well, and everyone has their own opinions on that. So we'll keep that what it is. But I'm really excited to have a product that's being built here in the U.S. That's been a goal of ours ever since we started Loved Concepts. In fact, if we could have been in the U.S. all along, we would gladly have been. Um, but... Um, unless you want to play the game of like buying some super expensive machines and learning how to run them, which isn't really what I want to do with my life. Um, I don't want to be a machinist and I don't want to like own a shop necessarily, at least not in this chapter. Um, that's kind of the only way that it's been possible to get things built in the U S is to kind of build them yourself. Um, but Thank goodness, um, Recman USA has popped onto the scene. So now there's a US manufacturer that is out there and we're their first folding knife project. Um, you probably know the Recman guys if you've been in the scene for a while because they're essentially the same team. Uh, they come from the same team as River's Edge Cutlery. So uh, Mike and Carl and the guys over there have been working really, really hard with us to make this work. So. It's been a really long road. We've been working on getting this knife ready. This is a prototype, by the way. This is just kind of a, a sample that's been put together for me to put through uh, my paces. And I've been absolutely beating on this knife um, like way too much probably for the last two months or so. So um, yeah, they've been, I mean, from when we first started talking to when they had all the machines, to when we started working on creating this as a tangible thing. It's been a long, long time because we're their first go at it. That said, um, they got top-notch machines, they hired top-notch people, and they did a really, really good job. So I'm pumped. I feel like this is going to be really well received, I hope. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll just kind of share some details about it. I'm going to let other people review it. Um, that's going to be the way that if you want to watch like a review, <laughs> I'm sure uh, the way that YouTube knife reviews work, there will be some YouTube knife reviews that come out. I'll probably make sure um, in the first beginning of the lifespan of this knife that we get some out there to some reviewers so they can check them out as well and share their opinions with you. But let's talk about what's going on here with this knife in terms of build and kind of specs. There's going to be a few different production versions just on this very first run, and we plan to iterate on this knife a lot in terms of materials and finishes and things like that. Um, and we're already talking future projects in terms of subsequent models and other stuff to do with Recman here in the U.S. So let's talk about this knife, and I guess in some ways it's probably appropriate, oh, focus, it's probably appropriate to talk about how this knife differs from the AVNTs that have been built by Riat. Um, this is the Mark II, so it's meant to be different. Um, 
So this knife has a totally different construction in the sense that if you look on the lock side, you'll see this is a frame lock. So that's going to be the biggest difference right off the bat is instead of being a liner lock, it's a frame lock, totally different lock type. Um, in essence, in terms of like where you reach to disengage it, it's going to work very similar, um, but obviously a frame lock is a different animal to play with than a liner lock is. So we've got a frame lock here. You'll notice we've deviated away from the wire clip and now we have a milled titanium clip. Um, again, there may be some material <laughs> differences that come down the line, but on this one you're seeing titanium. Uh, we set that into a really cool, it's almost like a puzzle piece set into a pocket. There's a lot about this knife that's really intricate and I'm hoping people can find and appreciate those things because we put a lot of effort into a lot of really, really small details here. But the way that that clip sets into the frame of the knife is actually really particular and kind of special. Um, so it's a milled titanium clip, still relatively deep. One thing in the past like year or so that I haven't been doing as many videos on YouTube, I feel like some of my preferences have actually changed a little bit, not dramatically so. Um, I used to be all about like all the way deep carry, like almost past the butt end of the knife if I could be. Um, it's not that I hate that now, but I actually don't mind having just the littlest bit of knife sticking out of my pocket. I still don't want like freaking half the handle sticking out of my pocket. That would bug me like crazy, but I do not mind at all having a little bit out there. And the way that our designs have worked on the AVNT in particular, just the way that the handle terminates and all of that, that's kind of been by necessity. Maybe I've gotten used to it. <laughs> Maybe that's just part of it. But I mean, all along, one of my favorite knives in existence has been the Koenig Arius, and that's not deep carry at all. So it hasn't been like a giant hard and fast rule for me. I'm rambling about this now, I guess. Anyway, that's how deep the pocket clip sits on this guy when it's in your pocket. In fact, I'll just show you real quick. You're gonna have just about that much sticking out. So, no big deal. Hopefully you can tell I'm skinnier now too. Hopefully that shows on the camera. Uh, anyway, so yeah, pocket clip is not a loop over wire clip anymore. It's a milled titanium clip. And then, as you can see, we've got inlays, both lock side and show side. Uh, they are different in shape in the sense that this one fills the handle and on the lock side, we made the decision um, somewhere along the design process to basically for function and aesthetic um, by having the inlay not go over the lock bar cut, it makes it much easier to get all of the flair and the feel that we wanted out of the lock bar. And also, frankly, I think it looks kind of rad personally to have it just kind of follow that cut line where the lock bar is cut. Anyway, so this one is wearing black micarta um, inlays. We probably, I mean, at least on these first few iterations, we're not doing any black micarta. This is just a material they had uh, to put together this one for me um, so that I could, again, be testing it, etc. Micarta may be a thing we play with. It may not be. I, I imagine at some point we'll probably do some micarta. That just happens to be what's in here. But uh, we're already working with wood and zerk and copper and carbon, and there's more stuff to come. So inlays are going to be pretty rad on these in terms of the material selections that over time we're going to be coming out with, and even just this initial few are going to be bangers. Um, so yeah, inlays on both sides. They're not perfectly mirrored because of the lock bar. Um, next we have the backspacer is going to be pretty different. Um, it's much longer than it was on the AVNTs that are built by Riat. These Mark IIs get a much taller backspacer, so it follows a lot more of the knife. And we just kind of liked closing up the handle a little bit on this. We feel it suits it a little better. Um, next you're going to see we have these uniquely shaped pivots. Um, that's something we started doing on the RWBs, which you can see this is one I've got here. This actually has collars on it. This is probably not the best example to show you because it's hard to see the differentiation between the collars and the pivot on this one. But we started doing these unique shaped pivots on the RWB and we just love doing that now. Um, 
we had the idea somewhere along the way while we were working on the RWB. Like if you're doing a captive pivot, it doesn't need to be a circle. So we ran with it and it became a fun shape. And we've done that again here, except it's unique. It's a different shape than it was on the RWB because we wanted this to kind of fit the lines of the knife. And so it's just a cool captive pivot that not only the pivot hardware or the pivot itself, that screw is um, captive and shaped, but the collar matches it. So those will be fun to play with in materials as well. This one's just some titanium. Um, but yeah, so we've got collars and you'll see we actually were able to kind of mimic that on the lock side as well. So even though you've got that circular screw, which you have to have on the tooled side, um, we put essentially two collars around it over here <laughs> to simplify it so that you can have that same shape mirrored on both sides just with the one piece of hardware there in the middle. So that's pretty cool. Um, another thing to notice right here on the kind of forward choil area on the AVNT all along, we've designed it so that you can choke up and you can use this ramp and this forward space, um, but it was rounded before. It was kind of a, yeah, just a rounded surface. And now we've flattened that, we kind of chopped that down so that when you're choking up, it's just even more comfortable than ever before. You'll see it still sits flush with the blade, uh, with the flipper tab actually, because the flipper tab is hidden, just like on the original AVNT, when the knife is open. So this flipper tab, which you use to deploy the knife, becomes hidden and it fills in that gap, making it even more comfortable to choke up forward onto it. Um, we're still rocking a hollow ground blade, although now we're using MagnaCut and we're running, the, running these at 63 to 64 HRC, which makes me real happy that we're able to get there on MagnaCut. Um, I love to, like, I mean, I feel like most people at this point really like MagnaCut. It's been becoming prolific <laughs> at this point, um, but I've been loving with this one. Um, I've had this knife like stupid wet <laughs> and I have not cared to dry it off because I'm trying to see if I can get it to corrode. I've just been putting it through a bunch of kind of brutal paces. Um, this knife's been through the ringer, this particular one. Anyway, MagnaCut just like doesn't rust on me no matter what I do to it. So I love that. It's held its edge really well and we're still a real thin hollow grind. So we're at, I think we're right around 13, 14 thou behind the edge and we're carrying that just essentially all the way up to the tip, the way that we're grinding these now, which is really cool. Uh, we'll still have a crown spine. That's kind of one of the signature things on the AVNT that we love and didn't want to shake loose <laughs> moving on to another iteration of it. So the Mark II keeps that crown spine, that hollow grind, and almost kind of, I honestly kind of refer to this blade shape as a little bit of a Japanese tanto, personally. I don't know what you want to call it. It just is what it is at the end of the day, but um, kind of an abrupt belly here with a flat in this main portion of the blade and a pretty robust tip there. So yeah, um, in terms of like the overall, like if you pick up this knife and you've handled a Mark II, especially the titanium ones, um, like our second batch Mark IIs, or our second batch AVNTs, sorry. If you've handled one of those, this in essence is gonna feel really similar in terms of the dimensions have remained the same and overall length and all of that. Um, the weight is gonna feel fairly similar and the deployment methods are the same. Um, and so it's just like an Americanized, <laughs> reworked, enhanced, new iteration of the knife that kind of started it all for us, which seemed like the right place to start with a US made option. So that's kind of where we're at. I don't think I'm missing anything else. We do have some internal milling. Um, there is a lock bar insert, which right now we're running in AEBL. I think that'll probably stay the same. Um, so yeah, we're, these things just turned out sick. Um, I'm really stoked with how this one has done for me. I've been mean to this knife. Um, I don't want to say I've been careless, like, I've been intentionally a little bit careless because these knives are gonna go out to customer hands. And so 
part of the point of me having a pre-production one to kind of beat on is to beat on it and make sure that there aren't failure points. So I've been using this knife for all kinds of stuff from cardboard and zip ties and my normal kind of routine stuff to opening paint can lids when we're doing stuff around the house to like I've dropped it two times on concrete just from being like kind of rough with it. I've done a bunch of yard work with it. Um, I've been mean to it and I'm really glad that I haven't broken it <laughs> because I have grown to love it. Um, it's not like I can't get another one because again, these are mine. So I'll have a, a production one, but to have been able to put this knife through the paces that I have and have it just hold up as well as it has, I've been stoked. Um, yeah, it's pretty rad. So I hope that the reviews are good when you see actual reviews. Um, this is me, the person behind it, talking about it. So take all that for what it's worth. But the initial launch of these is going to be at Blade Show Texas. So that, as of when I'm filming, is in like less than a week. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the weekend before that right now. So the oh, today's the, let me just look at the calendar so I don't get the dates wrong because I don't want to be that guy. Uh, the dates of the show are Friday, February 23rd, and Saturday, the 24th. So we're going to be there with the initial offering of these. That's going to be the first place where you can get these. We're stoked to launch them at that show. Blade Show Texas, honestly, is my favorite show of the year. Um, Blade Atlanta is rad. Don't get me wrong. Blade Atlanta is bigger, like... Blade Atlanta is kind of the show, but my personal favorite, and I think I can speak for Ryan as well, we love going to Blade Texas. It's just a great show. The size of the room is awesome. I feel like the like average amount of, or the amount of interesting makers <laughs> per square footage is higher than some of the much bigger shows. Like Blade Atlanta is gigantic, but frankly, there's a lot of stuff at Blade Atlanta that as an enthusiast, I don't care about. Um, Blade Texas, it feels like there's a much more potent room <laughs> of a lot of makers that I like to see and that I'm interested in. Um, and yeah, we love that show. So we'll be there. That'll be the first place to get a Luft Concepts AVNT Mark II, um, which hopefully is exciting to you guys. It's really exciting to me. Um, we'll also have a few RWBs there. We've got a few left after all the pre-orders have been fulfilled and we've gotten the dealers their orders. There's some dealers who have those now as well. We've got a post on the Luft Concepts page about what dealers have what at the moment. That could change depending on when you watch this, if it's been a little bit. Um, but yeah, so if you're looking for an RWB, there are still some out there and uh, we're gonna have some at the show along with Mark II's. It's gonna be dope. Anyway, um, I guess if you've stuck around this long, it's been a while. I don't know how I always end up. This is why I don't film videos anymore. It takes so freaking long. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I guess just like a simple life update without being boring. It's been a long time since I've filmed a video. So some of you have probably been like, where's he been? Maybe not. Maybe nobody cares. That's fine too. Um, in fact, with what I'm going to say, maybe that's better. Um, I don't know how much I'll be filming on here, if I'm honest. I think when I slowed down to begin with, I was like, yeah, I'll get right back to it when things settle down. Uh, life has settled down. Like, it's not like I'm just so busy that I can't film. It's more that I fill my time with very different things <laughs> at this stage in my life. Um, I have had a really interesting last year and a half or so. I've undergone a lot of personal changes. I'm like 35 pounds lighter. That's just like the physical representation, I guess, of what has happened. Um, but a lot of my life has changed. And so I'm probably not gonna be like filming a bunch of videos. I'm certainly not gonna be like engaging with your comments. Don't take that personally. Like if you're saying something nice, thanks, I appreciate it. Um, but I don't care <laughs> what's happening on the internet very much at this point. Um, there are ways that I need to use it as a tool. Those of you who know what else I do for work, that's probably even more clear. Um, but like my personal screen time on my own cell phone at this point, I keep under 30 minutes a day, including texting and email and phone calls and Google Maps. Like I'm not sitting on Instagram, I'm not in group chats, I'm not hanging out with people virtually anymore. Um, and that's really, really good for me. Um, 
If you're here on YouTube and you've just watched a 20 minute video to get to this point, you're probably not there and that's fine. Um, and I no judgment at all, but it's just, it, for me, it is not the healthiest thing for me to be spending a bunch of time on the internet. I'm much healthier reading books and engaging at my church and just being in men's groups and spending time outside, not to make content about it, just to be there. Um, my kid just turned nine. Uh, just taught her to ride her bike like we're doing a lot of fun stuff <laughs> as a family and that's to me way more important so um, my uh, priorities and my prism through which I view the world is very different than it was when I was gung-ho about this channel and making a ton of videos and that's fine um, and the time that I'm spending doing knife stuff is all on left concepts now um, it's like, it takes a lot of my time. <laughs> There's a lot that Ryan and I need to do. Um, and so that's just the way it is. And I assure you that from my perspective, it's a really good thing. I'm not, not on YouTube because things are wrong. I'm not filming YouTube videos so much because things are more right than they were before. Um, so hopefully that's cool with you guys. If it's not, uh, you can't make me film videos. So <laughs> it's what it is. Um, there's a lot of other great content creators out there who are gonna be filming much more regularly than I will. That said, I'm not deleting this channel. I'm not getting rid of it. Um, there will probably be times where I'll share stuff. I don't know when and how frequently or any of that, and I'm not gonna agree to any regularity. Um, but yeah, when stuff happens like this, Great. I'm going to turn on the camera and I'm going to share about it because it's a big deal to me. Um, and then, yeah, if other stuff comes up that I feel like sharing and talking about, cool, I'll do it. If not, you won't hear from me. <laughs> so that's just the way it's going to be. Um, if you want to come say hi at Blade Texas, that would be rad. Don't feel like you have to buy one of my knives to come say hey. Um, yeah, anyway, I think that's good. We'll call it good there. It's like 22 minutes and this has been a lot of talking. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you on the next one, whenever that'll be. All right. See ya.